On February 24, 1991, in Ruston, Louisiana, 11-year-old Stuart Carey invited his best friend, Ryan Lawrence, to come over to his house. Ryan and I have been friends for a long time. It was Sunday afternoon, and we decided to build a fort up in a pine thicket near our house. We would need something sharp to cut the cheese down. And me and my parents got into a little argument over it because my dad wanted us to take it, and my mom didn't. I told her that he was old enough that he'd learn to be safe with it. I've been real cautious with them about pocket knives and hatchets or anything they can injure themselves with. I do hate to see a child get hurt. We had the hatchet now, and we had cut down all the trees and branches and lined them up against other trees, kind of as a lean-to, to make the fort. Both had to be home by five o'clock. We decided we'd get on our way home. We were on our way and we were talking like we usually do. Probably tomorrow. Actually, yeah. we had, tomorrow we had homework and stuff. So it'll be yeah. a while. Then Ryan saw the rope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, the rope! I'm gonna go swing on it. Okay. All the neighborhood kids played on the rope. Ron, he was a practical joker. Yeah, better idea, Stuart. So he put it around his neck and he goes, Hey, Stuart, I'm going to hang myself. And I said, You know, cut it out. That's not funny. That, don't be stupid. That's not a very smart thing to do. And me and I heard some people playing off in the distance. So I turned around to see if it was anyone I knew. Then while I was watching those kids, he was playing the prank. that all of his weight, you know, was on his knees and that he was perfectly supported and nothing was wrong. Then when I got closer to him, I saw that the joke was over and that he was really hanging. What? He was unconscious and he had a blue ring around his lips. I thought his neck was broken. With Ryan's full weight on the rope, the noose was too tight for Stuart to remove it. I knew I had to do something fast. So I started sawing as hard and as fast as I could. Every second counted, and I became panicky. I wasn't sure if what I was doing was the right thing. But then I thought, well, stay cool and keep a straight head about it. I checked to see if his heart was beating, and I thought he was breathing. He was still unconscious. I was scared. And that's when I ran for help. help. Stuart's parents were both at home. All he could say at first was that Ryan was hurt really bad. And I said, how is he hurt? And he said, really bad. Come quick, you've got to help us. Yeah. Yeah. Ryan's been hurt. I was expecting to see a cut, a broken bone. I never thought that it was as serious as it was. And when I topped that slope and saw Ryan, his whole face was blue. And he was convulsing. I saw the rope burns, and they were horrible. It was apparent that he was having a really difficult time breathing. I just wanted to panic. So I just ran, uh, ran across the street to a neighbor's house, and fortunately, they were home. Are you 
a little chicken to color your hair? If I start, am I stuck? Don't get stuck. Get natural instincts. No telltale roots. No problem. Your color's dazzling, and your hair is even healthier looking than before you colored it. Natural Instincts has 0% ammonia, 100% pure aloe, chamomile, and ginseng. Less worry, less roots, more reward. Natural Instincts from Clairol. Less risk, more color wonderful. Boston police officer Stephen Beard was on patrol less than two miles away when word of the accident came over his radio. Easy breathing. Yeah. When I arrived at the scene, I could see it was a very life-threatening situation. His color was very blue. His eyes had rolled back into his head, and he quit breathing. Ryan's mother, Vinay Jeter, rushed to the scene as soon as she heard what had happened. I was more of a hindrance to Ryan than a help. And Vicky pulled me down the hill at that point and held me physically. I kept thinking he was going to die before the ambulance got there. Kenneth Ambrose was one of the first EMTs on the scene. It was a real steep bank. The pine needles had really covered it. It was hard to get up there. It was real slippery. What you got? Oh, God. Accidental hand. The moment I saw the boy, I, I recognized who he was. He went to church with my son, who is the same age as he is. Andy, get the stretcher. Y'all get the stretcher up here. It's too steep to get up the hill. We're going to have to bring him down. Ryan, Ryan, can you hear me? Because of the steep bank, we took the child down to the bottom of the hill where we put him on a stretcher. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. The police officer was holding the airway open, and when he let go, he would quit breathing. Hold the airway open. Come on. I got it. There was some swelling. If the swelling persisted, if it did cut off his airway, there was nothing we could do to help him. That was the most helpless feeling in the world. I felt at that point that Ryan was slipping away. In route, convulsions were real violent. Come on, Ryan, take it easy. Ambrose managed to insert an S-tube to keep the boy's airway open. The major concern still was that nobody knew how long he had hung there, how long he had been without oxygen. When Ryan arrived at Lincoln General Hospital, he was immediately examined and given medication to try and control his seizures and reduce brain swelling. That hour was the longest hour I have ever waited. The first doctor that came out told me that due to a lack of oxygen, uh, they didn't realize if, how much brain damage that he would have. My little boy may never be the same again. But even if he's not, I'll love him even more. Still in a coma, Ryan was flown 70 miles to a hospital in Shreveport that had a special children's intensive care unit. They told me that the only thing we could do was wait it out. If in the morning Ryan doesn't respond to you, that it's very serious. At 7.30 that morning, he still had not responded. His eyes were closed, he was very still. And I got real close to him and I said, Ryan, it's mama, do you know who I am? And he, he opened his eyes real bright and he says, Benet, like, why would you ask me a question like that? Of course I know who you are. My Ryan, my perfect little boy, he was gonna pull through. Three months later, Ryan Lawrence has completely recovered with no signs of any brain damage, thanks to the quick thinking of his friend, Stuart. Stuart and I are closer now since this has happened. We play a lot more and we spend more time with each other and I hope to be his friend for the rest of his life. I'll always be there if he ever needed me. I feel like I could do anything right now. I really don't want people to think I've hung myself on purpose because I didn't. That's a lot, isn't it? Other kids can learn from this that not to put a rope around your neck because you could slip and fall and anything could happen. All right, we got it. Let's go. The happiest moment was when we walked into ICU at Shumpert and saw Ryan sitting up. It hollered, hey, Miss Vicky. Because at, 
After seeing him up at the playing field, I didn't know if I'd ever see that again. I'm very proud of Stuart. Stuart kept a cool head, and had he not thought as wisely as he did, Ryan would not have made it. <laughs> I thank him, and I love him from the bottom of my heart. And no matter where Stuart goes in his life, no matter how old he is, I think he and Ryan will remain the best of buddies. Yep. <laughs> and I think that our families through this will have a bond that will never be broken. <laughs> Next, step inside the command center where the calls for help are answered and meet the real-life heroes who save lives. Stay tuned for another episode of Rescue 911, next on Discovery Health Channel. Real life, medicine, miracles. Mr. Shapiro, step out of the car, please.